President Biden is expected to sign the bipartisan infrastructure bill this afternoon. The over $1 trillion measure passed the House over the week, over a week ago, rather, and the White House says that it will help create thousands of jobs across the country. Meanwhile, Speaker Nancy Pelosi has suggested the House could vote on President Biden's massive social spending package sometime this week. So for more on all of this, we want to bring in Ed O'Keefe. He's at the White House. Ed, good morning. Um, President Biden will sign the infrastructure deal into law today. How long until states start to see that money flowing, though? It's a good question, Anne-Marie. It's something we've been asking here at the White House, and they continue to sort of say it kind of depends on what kind of project you're talking about. Could be a few months. Uh, the Transportation Department's going to be handing out billions of dollars. A lot of the other money is going to go directly to states for things like broadband projects, expanding broadband access to corners of this country that haven't had good internet access in the past. Uh, but the hope certainly is that by election time next year, voters are seeing some elements of this infrastructure plan start to take shape, whether that's the repaving of local roads, whether that's the reconstruction of bridges, whether that's work being done to expand internet access or electric car Charging stations being set up at rest areas uh, along the nation's highways and roads. We'll see. Uh, you know, this is going to be, as the White House has described it, as, as uh, economists look at it, as we look at it, once in a generation piece of legislation uh, on, on, on par with the ambition of the Eisenhower Interstate Highway System done back in the 1950s, the amount of money that's about to get pumped into the economy mm -hmm. to start rejuvenating, really, the country's roads, bridges, airports, uh, you know, waterways, uh, and again, expanding things like internet access and electric vehicle access. So, uh, you know, it's going to, I think, more than anything, probably in the next few years, you're going to start to realize, oh, that was paid for with that bill. Okay, cool. Or why is the mm -hmm. highway clogged up today again as they start to reconstruct the lanes? Well, it's being paid for with the infrastructure money. Okay, great. White House is going to tout the fact also, of course, that this is going to create jobs all across the country of all sorts. Many of them, as the president likes to say, blue-collar jobs are the kinds that don't necessarily require a college degree, you know, pipe fitters, construction workers, uh, and others who can install a lot of this equipment. Uh, the hope, of course, to spur economic development across the country. All right. So once the tap starts flowing, of course, I expect uh, states to be lining up and arguing why they deserve more uh, for X, Y, Z. Um, so I thought this was sort of interesting. The White House has named former New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu as the senior advisor for the infrastructure bill. So explain what that entails. What will he be doing? Yeah, so there's a few different sort of, sometimes they get called czars or, uh, you know, point men uh, on various high stakes projects around here. There's Jeff Zients, who you recall, the silver haired guy that runs the COVID-19 response. He shows up in the COVID briefings that we host or that we air here on CBSN. Gene Sperling, the former uh, national economic director for Bill Clinton, worked with Obama, now also overseeing implementation of the American Rescue Plan, which was that big bill passed earlier this year uh, that pumped uh, billions of dollars into the economy uh, to help workers that were saddled uh, by the pandemic. In this case, now, Landrieu is going to come in and serve uh, as essentially the overseer, making sure that all the money is going out properly, tracking for waste, fraud, and abuse. We're going to hear more about this later today, probably when the president signs the legislation. Landrieu uh, former mayor of New Orleans, as you said, somebody who had thought about higher office, uh, could again one day, potentially, someone who briefly flirted with running for president in 2020. Some say he might do it again one day. If he does well with this project, certainly there's a good opportunity for that. The president likes to bring in guys that he knows, and yes, they are all, for the most part, men that he's worked with or that he trusts in, in some way to oversee these kinds of projects. I think the point they'll make with Landrieu is, as a former mayor, as somebody from the South and one of those cities that has benefited from federal investment in infrastructure, New Orleans, of course, with the reconstruction of levees and highways after Katrina, he's somebody uniquely positioned to track this money and make sure it's properly spent. Hmm. Um, in the meantime, that was actually the easy part of the president's uh, agenda, right, the infrastructure bill. The other half is the Build Back Better plan. And that's the part that, uh, that lawmakers, particularly in the Senate, have been really arguing about. But Speaker Nancy Pelosi has signaled that the House will be ready to, to vote on it perhaps even this week. So I, I'm wondering, you know, how likely do you think that is that it's going to happen? Um, is the support there? I know that there are still some lawmakers um, in the House and the Senate that are still having some questions about how exactly this is going to be paid for. And they're going to wait to tell us what they think of it all until they see reports 
from what's called the Congressional Budget Office, the Congressional Bean Counters, who take a piece of legislation and figure out how much it would cost right now in real dollars, how much it might cost or benefit the economy over time, the burden on taxpayers, etc. There's a series of reports expected to come from what they call the CBO this week. It's uh, probably the deciding factor for at least uh, 10 or so moderates in the House uh, who would determine whether or not they're okay with things and ready to proceed. Remember, the Speaker can only afford to lose three Democrats or is going to require the support of Republicans. And since no Republican has said that they support this ambitious spending plan, she's got to have virtually all Democrats on board. So watch for those reports. Then watch for the response of moderates, guys like Kurt Schrader of Oregon, Josh Gottheimer of New Jersey, uh, and others to see whether they're okay with this whether Senator Joe Manchin, Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona are okay with what the CBO says, and then the ball will get rolling. The goal is to get it passed this week in the House, and then it heads over to the Senate, where it's going to take a few extra weeks because of the procedural moves that it's going to have to go through over there. Um, okay, before we let you go, the president and Chinese president, Xi Jinping, are going to be having a virtual uh, meeting today, a virtual summit. Uh, they have a range of things to talk about. As I understand it, though, there's no clear sense of deliverables that they're aiming yep. for. You know, after these sort of things, we, we always like to say, well, what do you agree on? You know, what are you going to do moving forward? They're not even sort of mapping that out. So then what is, what is the point and what is the hope of this this, these talks. Right. Busy day here in Washington at the White House. Busy week. But this may be the most consequential moment of the week. Tonight, the president, 745 Eastern, uh, you know, Tuesday morning in Beijing, he will meet virtually with Xi Jinping. First time they've met virtually face to face this year. They've spoken, I think, twice by phone so far. These are two men who know each other from Biden's time as vice president. Uh, they've spent, I think, the t a total of at least 22 hours together over time. And so Biden touts himself as one of, if not the world leader who knows she the best. Um, lots of things on the agenda, as you said. And yes, no deliverable, no uh, big ambitious thing expected to come out of this, except hopefully U.S. officials would tell you an agreement to keep talking. Here's the thing. The U.S. Mm. sees itself in increased competition, not conflict, but competition with China in an economic sense, militarily, diplomatically, in sort of the race to win over the world. It's part of the president's broader concerns about democracy versus autocracy in a battle that the United States has to win. The goal is to get these two leaders on the same page and say, look, you're going to be doing what you do. We're going to be doing what we do. But here are the rules of the road that we should be following when it comes to economic competition, our military, cybersecurity, the situation in Taiwan, and a host of other issues. Um, as long as these two leaders are engaging each other and, and can keep things copacetic, the U.S. hopes that the relationship uh, can be one that's sustainable. Uh, what they've determined here at the White House over the course of this year is that as she continues to consolidate his power there through the Communist Party by running the central government, they understand now that the most effective way to get things moving is to have she and Biden speak directly. And once they sort of signal what should be done, everything else can flow from there. Usually in a big relationship with another country, it can start at a lower level. The assistant secretary of this and that can talk to the foreign vice minister of that and this, and then it can work its way up the ladder. In this case, they've determined, because it's China, because it's such a high stakes relationship, it's got to start up here and then work its way back down through the governments. Ed, you make such a good point. You know, Vice President Biden at least has this win. He's coming off of somewhat of a win with the infrastructure bill. But Xi Jinping has really sort of solidified his power after this Communist Party meeting. And it looks like he's going to be president for a good long, long time right. or perhaps as long as he wants to be. Um, and so it makes sense that this is a particularly high stakes and important uh, meeting. Um, Ed, thank you very much. Talk later. Take care.